Good evening. My name is Gadria Ahmed, and this is Straight Talk. My guest today is a reclusive entrepreneur who made his money as an oil trader. He operates a pioneer indigenous company operating in the downstream sector of the oil and gas industry in Nigeria and is also the first to explore upstream oil and gas opportunities in East Africa. Born to a prominent Ishekiri family, my guest studied law but joined Philip Brothers, the leading bank and commodities trading company in the world in 1982 as a commodities trader. He subsequently worked for the late controversial commodities trader, Mr. Mark Rich. Respected for his considerable knowledge of the industry, my guest is the architect of the era of selling refined petroleum products to Nigeria on open account. In recent times, his company has not been very active in the country, shifting its focus instead to its East Africa operations. On Straight Talk today, I'm very pleased to have with me the Chief Executive Officer of the Petrodel Group, Mr. Michael Prest. Thank you so much for coming on Straight Talk. Thank you for having me. There's a general belief in the country that the oil and gas sector has considerable problems, serious problems. Do you agree? Do I agree? Um, the biggest problem is one of perception in the sense that um, the majority of our citizenry don't understand what goes on in the oil industry. That is a, um, a problem which needs to be addressed because with 170 million people, then people need, need to feel the impact of the oil industry on their day-to-day day -day lives. So we can't be uh, the sixth largest o OPEC producer and for our citizenry not to feel the benefits of being an oil producer. And I think that's where m much of the problem lies. What you're saying that is the opaqueness of the sector that is a major problem and not sort of other things like corruption and all the other things we hear talk about. Hmm. I think it's, it's part and parcel of both. There are agencies who have the role of investigating that sector who have the role of, of looking into practices within that sector, and those agencies need to determine the extent of the malpractices and the extent of the corruption. Now, let, let, me, let me say that in speaking and, and, to and, people and, about... And, I, and I, yeah. I, I, I'm not an apologist for yeah, anybody who's I, done anything wrong, which I guess is where you're going to next. No, 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 actually before, I was going to get there eventually, but before that, on the issue of transparency, there's this um, general belief that the, the oil and gas sector has deliberately been made murky so that people could get away with murder. And that this um, refusal to be transparent in the dealings of particularly the um, state oil company is precisely because there are people who are making uh, money illegally through corruption and they cannot afford to have a, a transparent state oil company. The failure of NNPC and pro probably those of us in the oil sector is to fully articulate what it is we do. Um, people see NNPC, people see the oil sector and it's, you know, it's very seductive. You hear of large numbers and you assume things which don't translate to your day-to-day -day appreciation of that sector. That is a problem that was a product of how the sector was set up. And we, we have evolved and lived with that. Should we have improved? Yes, I agree with you. We should be in a position now to say that we, as best as we can, we own our oil sector. And there's a paradox in the oil business because you don't own the important parts that help you understand the value of what you have. So you please, please explain. You don't govern the price. It's governed by a market. Um, you don't, you can't control the consumption patterns. 
because that is, that is a, a function of the market. So all you can control is the resource you have in the ground and how you get it to the consuming public. The price they pay for it, in reality, you don't control. It's governed by a global market. And it's a global market wherein which demand and supply forces pertain to the world as a whole. We in Nigeria, despite being OPEC's sixth largest producer, we have on our own very little say in the part of the the part of it that impacts you and I and all your viewers. Now, but given that fact, the volatility and the lack of sort of certainty of certain aspects of the oil trade, doesn't that make it even more important that the bits that we can control, we control absolutely? So, for example, Nigeria is one of only, I think, two countries in the world that uses middlemen to sell its oil. Why is that? And I see where you're going to. The role of the middleman, it, it's a, the middleman has always been bashed on the head and he's seen as being taking, uh, taking a sort of a fat slice, a fat share of the cake. But let's be clear, what does the middleman do? The middleman takes risk, he opens markets, he, um, he, he at times he's, an, he's, he's almost like an evangelist for the product. He um, creates situations where, whereby the, the product can be taken in times where um, liquidity is tight and where credit is not available. So the middleman um, role needs to be better understood. Have middlemen exploited that position? Yes, but then middlemen, it's not unique to the oil sector. No, but, but, but in Nigeria, for example, the, the role middlemen have played is being seen as one of the major areas that allows corruption to thrive. We, we've had recent shortages of um, uh, refined um, petroleum products. And the problem is we have um, a subsidy bill that keeps growing and growing. And there seems to be evidence that, you know, in the past, people who've not actually brought in products are getting paid. And so technically, if we were to eliminate middlemen and Nigeria is able to sell and buy directly, um, the idea that somebody could claim money when they've actually not delivered a product would, would actually just, you know, not exist. Has Nigeria always had the ability to buy and to receive products from sellers who question Nigeria's ability to pay? The, you'd have to say clearly in recent years that hasn't been the case. Um, therein, the middleman steps in because he takes a quantum of that risk and he acts as an interlocutor, as a sort of a bridge between the seller and the buyer to make the transaction possible. Now, has that been abused? Well, de facto, yes, it has been abused. But does that mean that every single middleman isn't performing a role that has been beneficial to Nigeria? I don't think so. Okay, so... I mean, you, you began your, your introduction by saying, uh, you know, that I was the architect of, a, of an era of selling to Nigeria on an open account. Yes, so in many respects, we're to blame you for some of what we face today, no? <laughs> thank, thank you for that. But, but in many respects, that, on a more serious note, is the role of the middleman. If, if How did that come about? Explain to me what happened that necessitated you thinking this is the way forward, we should start selling to Nigeria using um, open accounts. In 1998, 1999, I was presented with a situation wherein I didn't understand why um, the NMPC had to cash collateralize LCs with what was then the Midland Bank to pay for an imported product. It didn't make sense to me because it struck me that what Nigeria had wasn't a cash problem, but was a cash flow problem in the sense that we sell crude, we receive an income. That income may not arrive on day one, but it will arrive. So it was a question of understanding, mm, do you appreciate that risk? And do you understand how the machinations of NMPC work? How the rotations and cycles of, of um, receivables actually functions? 
And I said, well, yes, I understood that, you know, you sell crude hypothetical on January the 1st, you get paid on January the 31st. So if you want to import product and pay for it on January the 1st, you may not have the cash there, but on January the 31st, you would have the cash. And that correlation is one that applies to any business. And, and I'm sure people understand that fully, cash flow management. So I said to my then boss that, look, the way I see the problem is this way. And um, he asked me, do I believe an MPC will pay? But the way he asked me was such that he wasn't asking me flippantly. Mm -hmm. He was asking me that, did I believe they would pay? And if they didn't would pay, you stake? I would be fired. Yes. I had to give a response that was based upon my understanding of Nigeria and my understanding of, of NMPC and my belief that Nigeria always pays. We may have difficulties, but I believe, and I still believe, Nigeria always pays. And I went back to him and I said, yes. And he said, okay. Now, here is a classic role of a middleman. Because he had a balance sheet that could absorb what was then a $20 million risk per, per cargo for X number of days, he could take it on his balance sheet. He went back and he said to me, okay, we'll try it with, I believe then was, I don't recall, three cargoes. So $60 million open account risk. Open account risk taken on the basis that come 30, 45 days, we would get the money. And that's how, and that's how that started. era began. So we moved from three cargoes to, and the rest is history. Now, there you have a classic example of a positive role of a middleman. I don't think that problem could have been solved between a bank and Nigeria at that time per se. But we have to agree that it is a problematic sector. And if that is the case, what are the issues that must be addressed and addressed very quickly? The biggest issue is that people have to feel the impact of the oil sector, a positive impact of the oil sector. The, um, the responsibility of those in the sector is to ensure that whatever they do, they recognize that they are doing it on behalf of the citizens of Nigeria. Let us take a break. When we return, we talk about the possible solutions to the problems that we've identified and ask also if the passage of the Petroleum Industry Bill will make a difference or if, as it has been suggested, the answer lies in selling off Nigeria's National Petroleum Corporation, the NNPC. Don't go away.